Yeah, oh my goodness, thank goodness she finished her work. Okay, I gotta find that student. Okay, um, oh, Nadi, we're taking our Membean quiz right now, so get, grab, jump on Membean, okay? Yeah, jump on Zoom and jump on Membean and get your Membean done. Nai, Tasia, hello, Nailicia. Did you have a good weekend? Yeah. I think we're all just waiting for the summer already, yeah? Like summer, here we come. Okay. Jump on, um, you can, I was gonna say jump on Zoom, but obviously you're on Zoom. So jump on your membean, okay? I'm gonna just give you a big, good old fashioned heads up. Don't be switching from screen to screen because it will flag, it will flag as, um, suspicious activity okay and then like the police will get called no not really but i mean just don't switch screens okay because you're going to get accused of cheating from the membean gods kayla stop checking yourself out in zoom you're fine you look fine <gasps> and you're eating I can't hear you. No, I don't want. No, thank you. Thank you for offering. I'm going to sound like a really old tutu lady right now, but get cockroaches. So hurry up and stuff some in your mouth and then put it away. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ahi. Hi, Ahi. Okay, jump on uh, Membean. Okay, again. Don't be switching back and forth, people, okay? I don't want the membean police to accuse you guys of suspicious activity. Where is everybody? <laughs> you guys are so lucky. When you guys have snacks, you just bring the whole container with you guys or the whole package. My mom would be like, put it in a Ziploc bag. You can only take some. Yeah, my mom was like, my mom was the snack police. And then I got to tell you one story about my twin after. Go do your work first. That's how my mom does. Yeah. And don't you dare open another cereal until the first cereal box was eaten. If not, cracks. 
Go and open this cereal box. Still get cereal in this one. I can hear them. Yeah, that's how. Okay, never mind. We should go back to writing stories. That was fun. Okay, do your mem bean again. I'm get. I'm, I'm. I sound like my sister at Hilo Medical Center. Please do not switch between one screen and another because the mem bean police is going to flag you for suspicious activity. So just try your best and see what happens.
Hi guys, can you please leave your camera on so you can stare at the screen? Emily, we are on um, Membean. So go into Membean, you guys, and um, start your quiz. 20 questions. I don't know what you guys are doing. This is not started. Who else? Oh, where's Nella girl? Can you text her? What Nella girl? You just woke up. No, I was talking with oh. my dad and I totally forgot about your class. Oh, we can hear you know. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, we are on Membean. Oh. Okay, good. Once, yes, I see that you're done. It happens in real time. Thank you for letting me know. Um, go ahead and get onto um, your canvas. Okay. Get onto canvas. We're going to do a three, two, one with um, George Helm and Lord of the Flies. So you might want to bring up your worksheet from last week. Okay, bring that up and running. Um, week, go to week six, Lord of the Flies reading schedule, and the three, two, one is right there. So who is Done. Oh, yeah. So let's see, there are four of you done. So go ahead and get again into Canvas and go to week six, Lord of the Flies reading schedule. And then there's the discuss and there's the three, two, one. Go ahead and copy and paste that down into the, the um, discussion board text box. And then go ahead and answer those questions. Yes, Nella, the Membean quiz. So get onto Membean and then it should just pop right up automatic. Okay.
Okay, so use your notes from, you remember that last time we, um, we got on and we watched the Hawaiian Soul video, yeah? Use that, use the video, um, the background video, the notes from the background video. Okay, and then um, for that one part where it says, make one connection to Lord of the Flies, I wanna see a direct quote in um, that you make the comparison with um, George Helm. Okay, when you guys are done, the directions is in the chat, so you can go there and check it out.
All right, you guys, how's it going? So just wanted to let you know that I'm going to be absent next week. I'm going to be trying out for um, American Idol. I'm joking. I didn't do April Fools on you guys. So I was just trying to, I was going to sing a whole song, but then I was like, better not. Anyway, um, <laughs> Becca's like, oh, yeah, I wanted to hear what song. I should have been like, I'm going to sing um, Happy Birthday for my audition song. You guys have been like, oh, my gosh. She was, she would be like the not, ex the non-example, you know, like how American Idol, they have like those really horrible examples and then they go viral. Yeah, that'd be me. Okay, anyway, let's move on. So I wanna share with you guys what this discussion is going to sound like in your small groups, okay? So when you do the three to one for George Helm, I want you to come up with three interesting details that you can elaborate upon, okay? So it's gonna sound like this, and I'm gonna just share with you guys what I thought was interesting because I don't know about you guys, but I had like all kinds of emotions watching the, the the film, The Hawaiian Soul. Like I actually was crying, but thank goodness, you know, I get my mask on so you cannot see my eyes, just joking. Um, so what we have here, okay? So the first detail that I thought was interesting was that I thought it was really cool that he, that George Helm inspired and connected people through music. Yeah, he used music as like a portal into people's souls, basically, right? So that helped him to, sh to share the message of Aloha Aina issues, which is really cool. And the second detail that really, um, that I wanna call out is that he, I was surprised that he only worked on the Koho Olave, protect Koho Olave, um, I don't know what um, pro project for like only a year. Yeah. So for me, that's like, I wonder what he could have done um, had he survived. Yeah. Had he been alive. And then the third detail that I, I thought was really cool is that he grew up on Molokai. And the reason why I think that's really cool is because um, that sends a strong message that it doesn't matter where you are from, you can make a big impact, yeah, on the people around you or even for future generations to come, like how he did. So those are my three interesting details of George Helm. My two questions, one I already kind of talked about, which was what would have happened or what would he have accomplished had he survived, yeah, past 26, 27 years old. What would he have accomplished? The second question I have here is, is more like a, on a personal note, but that is how can we create a love for the land like George did, right? Like how can we grow that sense of um, empowerment within ourselves to make the Lahui stronger? Yeah, and what kind of vibes are we gonna give off because it seemed like he just came at it with, with just nothing but aloha and it, it got him far, yeah. Next, the connection I had with Lord of the Flies and George Helm talked about the values, okay? So um, the two men that shared the video, the well, who created the movie Hawaiian Soul, they were cool. Their vibes were super positive, super like, I really like their values and how, because they had these really good values and this connection, they were able to ask permission from the Helm family to do the, the movie, right? And as you guys know, I think you guys kind of picked up that the, the Helm family ha did not at that point give anybody the blessing to do a video or a movie on um, their beloved ones, right? They didn't give permission. But because these two young men were um, came at it from the right approach, they were given the blessing and even stayed at their house, which I thought was super cool, right? So if you do things the right way, great. This relates to Jack in chapter nine. Okay, so do you see how I'm transitioning, yeah? 
this relates to Jack in, in chapter nine. Why? Because on page 151, Jack asked the rest of the boys, who will join my tribe? Right? At this moment, when Jack uses meat and hospitality, right, to leverage his power, um, it wasn't Pono, right? That wasn't cool. And, you know, even if he had one ounce of what George had in his values, maybe Jack would be a different person. But instead, Jack is using his position of power and manipulation to cause a divide, right? So um, on a higher level, the connection here is, is one of like a life lesson, yeah? What kind of leader are we gonna be? Yeah, um, Jack is not, not there, okay? So anyway, everybody good? Does everybody have their three, two, one done? Because I want you guys to have a really meaningful conversation for the next like seven minutes and then we'll move on. Okay, I'm gonna be asking each group to share out like maybe what was one like important um, or meaningful um, detail that came up, okay? So you guys ready? You're gonna share out with each other. You share out the three to one and then you guys can um, pick maybe one thing that was pretty inspirational. Okay. okay. All right, some of you guys are going to be partnered up. So you can have some meaningful conversations like Okay, here we go. Actually. Sorry, I'm moving all the people that are in my class to one room so that they can, we can talk um, in class and you guys can talk on Zoom. One, five, okay, I think I got you guys. Three. Okay, all right. Go ahead and share out your three to one and make sure you can share out one thing that you guys learned, okay? All right. Okay, for us, let's just go quickly around and just share out what is this, what, what is your three to one? So we'll start with Kalukalani, you can go first. Right? He's with Eddie I call. Oh. In the Mark you can see him, right? Anyway. And then 
find that especially on page blah blah blah. Oh my goodness, you're you're more than love music and human. Also, you're also known as the ultimate sacrifice. And the method of doing this is very well in the face of conflict. I like to tell you that if you're born to be with you, what you can do is you can bring back to what kind of the fur of Tom is like a bar of that. On my second picture, I was based on George Walker's talking with the people who must connect with the world. I met him and looked into the other time. On my last connection, in chapter 8, um, the thing was so full of having Once you guys submit your page, you can see if you have any updated responses. You can kind of check out that your guys' responses are are pretty on point with the rest of um, the class, the other kids in the class. Um, especially about Natty's point where you can tell, like, this foreign perspective, right, doesn't work, right? And this idea of Aloha Aina will get us so far, and hopefully, you know, wherever we go after we, you know, we like go away to school or whatever, that you spread that um, love and understanding of what Aloha Aina is to the rest of whoever, right? Whoever is willing to to know it, right? We don't want to give it to the people that don't deserve it. Yeah, so very good. I like what each and every one of you guys said because you guys came at it from different angles. Okay. okay, so you guys can go ahead and submit. And then just come up with some one thing that you guys want to share up because you guys will be your own group, yeah? Okay. Good job. Oh. Hello. Hello. We we um, had our discussion. Okay, yeah. cool. Cool. And what? Um make sure you guys come up with one thing you guys want to share up. Oh, that's what we have to do. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to announce that. Oh, yeah. I just saw that yellow. Did you see that? Yeah. What is what? Yeah, it's been happening. In just, in just my class, in just my screen. Yeah. Oh, it's because I'm electric. Boogie, woogie, woogie, woogie. Holy cow. I can't uh -huh. believe I did that. <laughs> that was so bad. Ah, he don't you dare open up that box cereal, I tell you. Yeah, no. I asked mom if she could go to the store and go pick up some, uh, what's it called? The Tony the Tiger one. Ooh, Frosted finish. Flakes. Yeah, she said I got to finish the Frosted, the Apple Jacks or whatever. Yeah, you cannot be busting open a new bag or whatever. Like, I bought, I'm not going to lie, I bought four bags of chips. And I can't wait to open them all. 
Oh, I do that. Mm. You make cereal. Mm-hmm. I open like, two bags and I'll finish one. Do you mix them together? No, because fruity pebbles and um, <gasps> the chocolate pebbles don't go very well together. Oh, I love fruity pebbles. That's one of my favorite things to eat without milk. Right? Mm-hmm, right. It's like it's candy. Cream. Oh, <laughs> right on. Okay, let me check with somebody else. Nice to see you guys. What, ready? Ready, ready, ready. Oh my gosh, what's going on here? It must be the last period of the day. Rigor man has got the brand new dance. Rigor man's got, a... see, I'm going to American. You guys were like, oh my gosh, is she serious? No. Nah. Yeah, I was like, just keep her in the water. She's safe there. Okay. So you guys get one thing you guys sharing out, right? Share out one thing, okay? Huh? Yeah, just choose which thing you want to share out with the group. Hi. How are you? Good. Really? Yeah. I bet you're better now. Yeah, I'm way better. Okay. Wow, you could have lost it. Can you thank Maddie for finding your wallet? Thank you. Yeah. That's okay. You needed a break. You needed a break. Thank you, though, yeah? Yeah, Maddie. Fun. Hi, you guys. Okay. Um, I just need like four people to share out okay what is one thing that you walked away with like what what is one interesting thing that you guys talked about now you go first okay so our my group we said that um george hum and simon are both like (gasps) both leaders and we made a connection that's it's not a you know one that it's a really really good connection but it's both of them they followed right what they believed in Mm-hmm. They both ended up dying in the end, but oh. we both came to realize, like, George Helm won, right? And Simon, he walked up to the mountain and realized that the parachute man wasn't the beastie, but he ended up getting killed because the other boys didn't want to listen to him. And Yeah. Okay. I think we're done with class now because I'm not going to have a, a cry moment. Okay. Niao, go ahead. Thank you for sharing. We have to talk about the detail that relates from. No, you can just like talk about something, maybe a question or whatever. Okay, so we talked about how it was interesting that he used music to connect to the people and share about his passion with like Koho Olavi and the land and even where he grew up and how he was raised and our culture. Right. Yeah. Okay, who's next? Who's next? Whose group never go? Oh, Maddie guy's group, go. So, we talked about how like George is like known for his love, music, and humor, and how he's like also known as like the sacrifice and how everyone wants to spread his like story like worldwide and yeah um i talked about how instead of studying uh in the film they talked about how um, instead of practicing war, that you should practice, learn to practice peace. And it kind of like how to, in the book, the boys always like, talk about hunting and killing and like having arguments with one another. So instead of having so much chaos and destruction, you should learn to understand and practice peace and harmony with one another. Love it. Niall, you're going to add? Yeah, so another thing that we talked about 
or one of my questions were like, if he wasn't raised in Molokai, like, would his use of music still be the same? Right. Or even his love of the land, right? Yeah. I mean, awesome. Oh, that is, that is solid. That is a good question. Like, really, what if he was born on Oahu? Would he have those deep-rooted values? Yeah? I don't know. Maybe. Never you never know. You know, what if he was born on Kauai? What would have happened, right? Kauaiian, that's why. Okay. So, um, yes, Kekama. Yes. Uh. I have a question. Go for it. Uh, when did, uh, how did he die? Uh, George Helm. How did he pass away? Oh, Kekama, that's the question. We don't know because um, there was one story that came out, but nobody believes that story, whatever that story is. I don't want to repeat because I don't want to get it wrong, but you can go and like just Google. Oh, oh yeah, he was on George. the ship. Oh, freak. I forgot about oh <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, this, <laughs> so um, <laughs> you should Google that. So, I didn't tell my other classes, but I'm going to tell you guys um, that as this thing was going on, right, the, the Hawaiian Soul video was going on, what was really interesting was I started, like, just Googling him like crazy. And there were, at one point, there were five guys, George Helm and four other guys who went on to, who snuck on to Kaho'olawe to protect it, right? That's, like, part of the story. And I looked at the other four guys' names, Walter Ritty, and then had somebody else, somebody else, and then had this guy named Charles. Um, I'm having, it, well, oh, Charles Warrington, okay? Anybody know any Warringtons in Hilo? No, okay? So I'm like, oh, wow, look, Charles Warrington. What is that? Who is that, right? So then I Googled him and this um, obituary pops up because these are kind of famous guys in, in Hawaiian history because they helped you know, to save, to protect Koho'olawe. So there was a little write-up on Charles Warrington, okay? I read his obituary. You guys listening, yeah? Because this is crazy. I read his obituary. I'm like, hmm, I had a coach, Charlie, growing up. My basketball coach, his name was Coach Charlie Warrington. And I was like, okay. So I keep reading the obituary. And at the end, you know, it always ends with survived by family members, da 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 da. Then I looked and I said, oh, I played basketball with a Calico Warrington. I looked down below, survived by Calico Warrington. I was like, wait, wait a minute. And then he had passed away like in 2012. What? He lived in Panaeva? I live in Panaeva. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? So I text my dad. I'm like freaking out, right? Because this gentle giant of a man coached me playing basketball on my very first girls basketball team at Andrew's gym. You know where that is? Okay. And I never knew he was one of those guys who snuck onto the island. So of course I gotta go back and I gotta ask my dad all kinds of questions, right? And my dad said, one of the coolest things that I think you can do to honor anyone is to say, he said, I respected that man. And I was like, wow, I don't, you know, that's a really cool thing to, to show that you honor someone is to respect a person. And I thought, wow. And he was the nicest person ever. I don't know. Anyway, long story short, my old basketball coach was one of those guys who helped to save Koho'olawe. And you just never know who you're going to meet in your life. So be nice to everyone. Okay, moving on. Okay, there's my lesson of the day. I think we're good to go. Now we need to practice for American Idol. So let's go on and move to the next part of our module. <laughs> okay, so we have um, questions from chapters eight through nine. These questions are going to generate a deeper discussion, a deeper dive into what the heck happened. Okay, so I'm gonna break you guys up into, into groups. 
I'm going to recreate this because, okay, let's see. Okay, perfect. Nope. Okay, four. All right, let's see what happens. Da -da 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 -da. Perfect. Okay. Oh, wait. Don't go into the rooms. Don't go into the rooms. Don't go back. Damn it. Darn. Wait, come here. All right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it feels like Friday. Okay. So, anyway, um, what I want to tell you guys is who's doing which question. So, group one, which is room one, is Ahi, Emily, Kekama, and Maddie. You guys are going to answer number one. Okay. Room number two, you're going to answer question number two, which is Damien, um, Nella, Niao, and Becca. Question three, Kayla, Diesel, Makamai. And question four, Kalukalani, Nai, and Teja. Raja Dajas, you have 10 minutes. I need to see a topic sentence. Just submit one response. Okay, everybody, just one response, but work together. So. Ten minutes. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to go home. What's wrong? Hello? Anybody? One person type, the other people help. Okay. This is like a CER, so you need to make sure that you restate the, the question as the claim. The fire symbolizes blah, blah, blah in chapter eight. Just go ahead and do that right now. Just one person type. You don't need to have everybody typing. Okay. We use it on the reply box. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You have 10 minutes. You are doing number one. Yes. Does the symbolism of the fire have multiple meanings? Yes. yes. Okay, good. You're on the right track. Now answer the question. <laughs> Don't forget your direct quotes. I want you to address at least two, maybe three different perspectives of the fire as a symbol, okay? What is Nella doing? She's singing? No, I was burping. Or burping. I, burped. I burped and then I was talking to my dad. <laughs> oh, tell him I said hi. Oh, what if I had a talent that like, I could just burp and like sing like a song? Oh, that would be major. So, what? Major. what? That will be good. I'm going to learn. Tell your dad I said hi. Okay. Were you guys cousins? Yeah. Oh, cute. That would not be American Idol. That would be America's Got Talent. Okay. Okay. So. Well, I'll be I'll be on Got Talent, and you be on America's um Idol or whatever it is called. Yeah. No, thank you. 
Okay, so what is the gift for the darkness? Uh, it's the pig head, right? Okay, and who finds it? Diamond. And what happens? Um, that's like when the fly started talking to him. And that's like the Lord of the flies. Good. Okay, so let's go ahead and answer that and make sure you have at least one direct quote. Okay. Anytime you add, you add in the direct quote, though, you have to follow it up with the elaboration part. Yeah, with the, the R, the reasoning out. Okay. You said only one person has to um, answer the response, like for all well, of us. Well, you know, share your screen so that everybody can see. Go ahead. It's it's Becca. It's Becca. Um, I need permission. I put it on just now. Ken. Oh, <gasps> what? Oh no! Why? You guys can share your screen. Maddie, can do you have the option to share your screen? Share your screen so whoever, yeah. Becca, you sure you can share your screen? Maybe somebody else has to type or something. I don't know. I would not like the responsibility of that. I think Maybe I'll. What, I... uh, what the heck did I do then? Oh my gosh. Can you allow like... screen share? Please? I'm trying, girl. I don't know. It's like two, two. It's like two. It's like. Kupuna hour in Zoom. Hang on. I don't know what is going on with my thing. Um. Who can share? All participants, save. Who can start sharing when someone else is All participants, save. Try. Did it work? Really? What the heck? Okay. What? Oh, why is it doing that? Okay, try now. Who's sharing their screen? Say share. Does it work now? Um, no. Oh my goodness. Now try. <clears throat> oh, 
No, does it work? No. What? Uh, fine. It's fine. She put it in the chat. So. Oh. Oh my goodness. Let me check somebody else's. Can I just? Where do I save? Hmm. Let me see if another class. Oh my gosh. I wonder if my camera's going kaput. Yeah. Hi, how are you guys doing? You guys done? Are you guys able to share your screen? Um, yeah, no, you need to be able, you have to make so many calls. You have to have it, your, the sharing. That is so weird. But yeah. Okay. You guys are done though? Yeah. Okay. Look, I said multiple p participants can share simultaneously. Okay, good. Okay. Can you share now? What about now? <laughs> Boy. Okay, we're going to we're we're going to stop this. All right. All right, being that I can't share my screen for some reason, I wonder if I can share my, I should be able to share my screen. You can see my screen. Oh, so much fun, you guys. Okay, and yellow, cause it was all yellow. I came along. I wrote a song for you. Okay, who's number one? Which group was that? That was our group. Okay, let's go ahead. You guys go first. We weren't done yet. <laughs> okay, just talk about it then, and then you guys can finish up. So I pointed out that the fire could like symbolize fear because they didn't want to go up to the mountain. So they had to go to like, they lost the most visible place for the smoke to be seen. Okay, what else did you guys have? Because there are multiple symbolisms for the fire. What's another? Yes, Kekama. So I was a part of their group and I also thought that the fire was a symbol of kind of comfort. Whoa. Because, so I'm pretty sure if I read it right, so there was, I think Simon, he like passed out or something. Mm -hmm. And then, cause he seen the, he seen something at the beach or something. I don't, I don't remember what it was. He seen something and he fainted. Right. And when he, when Ralph found him, he picked him up and he was like, oh, let's go back to the beach and start a signal fire there instead of the mountain. And then they made the fire on the beach instead of the mountain. So mm -hmm. I feel like it's a sense of comfort because the signal fire is like a, is like a kind of like their only way back, kind of. Right. To the 
world. What's the right. signal about the people that are flying by? Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of, um, uh, I think, de not decipher, but translate what you said. So the, the signal fire can possibly mean hope, right? Because it's like they're maybe their way out. So hope maybe, okay. It can represent fear. Okay, what else? Anybody else had something for symbolism of fire? Um, I put the fire as a symbolization of like a last minute hope because a lot of the boys are slowly giving up on keeping the fire alive to go with Jack's tribe. Um, and Ralph and Piggy are fighting to keep an open mind to having still the fire signal up because um, around page 139, it, uh, they talked about how um, it's like some, they said if someone threw you a rope when you were drowning, you would like, you would take in and stuff. And so that's, they're kind of going back to like, if we don't have the fire signal, then we have no hope left. So they're still trying to keep that hope going with that fire. Very good. Okay, so that's what I'm, you guys. I'm really looking for like a deeper understanding of what's happening, right? And the fire, because it's a complex symbol, um, it can represent hope, fear, right? This thing that's being extinguished every once in a while, right? Which would be like their spirits, maybe. Yeah. Um, so when you hear a really good answer, I hope that you guys take that in, right? Like how Maddie just gave, provided um, a pretty good synopsis of what uh, the fire could represent. Okay, all right, question number two, go ahead. Okay, so our group question was, um, what is the gift for the darkness and explain who finds it and what happens? So the gift, for the darkness was the pig's head that Jack and the hunters caught because they decided to leave it for the beast so that thinking that it would leave them alone and stuff. And then as they, they left it for the beast, right? But then Simon found it and the Lord of the Flag started talking to him. And the quotes that we used was from page 143 and something that the beast said to him was, Fancy thinking the beast was something you could hunt and kill. Oh, and there's another one. Can I see the other one? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the other one was also from page 143. And it was, you knew, you knew, didn't you? I'm part of you. Close, close, close. I'm the reason why it's a no-go, why things are what they are. Yeah. And then Simon loses his consciousness not cautiousness, okay? So those are two different things. So he loses his consciousness because he's like so overwhelmed with what the um, Lord of the Flies has to say, right? That he he just passes out, knocks, you know, and he has a like bloody nose, whatever, right? Um, quite interesting. Okay, number three, very good. Okay, so for number three, um, an example of foreshadowing would be on page um, 144 when, like, the Lord of the Flies warned Simon about, like, I think that he was trying to say, like, don't try and, um, I don't know what the word is, but don't try and get rid of me because I'm here and I'm not going anywhere is what I'm trying to say. So uh, that's when like Simon knocks out and then when Simon wakes back up again and like tries to go, he dies. So that's, I guess, foreshadowing. I think another event would be the parachute part um, of the book when he finds the body of the dead dude. So yeah. Okay. Anybody else have another suggestion for 
foreshadowing. Um, did somebody say like the weakening, the weakened connection to civilization and the rise of savagery between the boys and their tribes? Hmm. Um, that's not foreshadowing though. So like, okay, so maybe we don't understand what foreshadowing means, right? Um, so foreshadowing, right, is when there's like hints to what's to come, right? So Piggy continues to say throughout the book, right? I'm afraid of Jack. Something's going to happen to me, right? Okay, that is foreshadowing, right? Because as we all have identified, is Piggy a weak link or a strong link, right? Is Piggy an easy target? Okay, does he have something that everybody needs? Okay, so if you, if you know that, every time Piggy says, I'm afraid of Jack, I'm afraid he's going to harm me, right? He's, anytime he says something like that, that is foreshadowing, okay? Another thing, okay, maybe we've missed it. What's the weather like in this part of the book? Okay, Emily? Oh, so somebody go ahead. No, no it's fine. Okay, Emily, go. Stormy, bad. <laughs> okay, yes, stormy, bad, yes. Very good. So anytime, like even in the movies, right, when you see the clouds rolling in or there's like thunder happening or what rain, right, we know that something is about to go down, right? So this storm is starting up, kind of bad like how when they crashed the plane, when the, not them, but the plane crashed and it was like one of those like really bad weather days, right? Something bad's gonna happen and we know what it is, okay? So I'm looking for maybe the storm, okay? All right, question number four, go ahead. All right, then. Okay, so in chapter eight, I believe that, yeah, in chapter eight, when Simon, he told them that they should climb the mountain to go see what the thing on top was, and nobody wanted to listen to him, so he ended up going by himself, and while he was walking, he threw a fit and then started hallucinating the Lord of Flies was talking to him. Then he went unconscious. He woke up, and then he saw the pig, but then he I, that's when he crawled up to the mountain, right? Or he went to the top and saw the man with the parachute. And he was weak and he tried, he saw the, his people and he was trying to tell them like, it's not a beastie, it's the man with the parachute, but then he ended up getting killed. And who's to blame is all the boys because they didn't want to listen to him. And they just saw it. And since they were scared of it, they just attacked. Okay, very good. So I think if you watch enough like ESPN, or if you just watch enough TV, right? Um, the word is frenzy, right? They're in a frenzy, right? At the end, when Simon is uh, brutally attacked, um, the boys are inculcating, which is like this chant, right? What's the chant? Kill the beast, right? Um, they are chanting this whole kill the beast thing, right? Over and over and over again. So you'll see it sometimes when like, maybe you're watching a football game and this big, huge brawl pops up, right? And they're, they're punching each other with their helmets on, right? And it doesn't make any sense. And, or like if you see like a baseball game and both benches clear out and everybody's fighting each other, or even like on the news sometimes you'll see people break out into this frenzy, this heightened sense of just like, there's, there's just an all out, like people have lost their minds. That's what happened to these boys, right? They, they reached their tipping point of becoming savage, right? They have lost all control of civilization.
And so, my goodness, they decide, they, they, I don't know. I don't know if the word is accidentally kill one of the boys on the island, but they do it, right? The symbolism of Simon's death is a big one though, right? How many of you guys think that that's your favorite character? You guys are like, um, okay. So Simon, right? He has the, the truth, right? He already said the truth before he knew because he, he already knew the beast. There's nothing to fear because the beast was inside of them. And he knew it, right? He was more afraid of the beast that was inside of the boys, in, inside of Jack, right? Inside of all of them, that he was like, hey, let's go climb the mountain. So Nai, Nai did a good job on explaining that part, the backstory, right? That he was like, yeah, let's go on a hike. And they're like, are you nuts? Right? Piggy and Ralph are like, are you nuts? He's like, there's nothing left. Let's just go, right? Because he knew already, right? That the danger was inside the boys. So then he goes, he meets, he sees the parachutist. He's like, oh, look, this will explain everything. Because once the boys understood that the beastie thing is the parachutist, then Jack can't use the fear to leverage control over the gang. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm walking you guys through this because this is important for the rest of the book. Because that... Because Simon passes away with the truth, right? He was trying to tell the boys, parachutist, man on the mountain, ah, right? Don't kill me, bye, right? Um, he dies with the truth. And now what can Jack do? Jack can go ahead and run, run with it as much as he wants. Okay, there's nobody else to stop him, okay? So everybody should be caught up on what's going on. Yes, there was this pig on a, on a stick and it was talking because he was hallucinating, right? Okay, so we are at that point now, heading into chapters 10 through 12. You're gonna stop on page 200 because we're gonna finish the end part of the book together, okay? Yes, Kekama. Uh, can you check my reply in the canvas thing? Yeah. Because on my screen, it didn't load in. Oh, you have to refresh. Oh. Yeah. And it should be there. Uh, I don't know. Um, Kekama, I just see a blank response. No, yeah, that's what I see too. That's what oh, I that's weird. I don't know. We'll see. Um, can can uh, you maybe hit the back button or something? Maybe that and then screenshot it and send it to me. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so we should all be caught up. We understand what's going on. We are going to go say farewell to Simon in a poem. Okay, so go ahead and hit the next button. I'm going to walk you guys through because um, this farewell Simon assignment is um, something you're going to work on now. And then when you return tomorrow, you should have at least a draft of it done. So I'm going to walk you through this. So go ahead and make your own copy. Um, set the share settings to anyone with a link can comment. Okay, you're going to be posting your poem of Simon and um, of another character later on. Okay, but I want you guys to have something done now. Okay, so if you guys look, we are only going to focus on the nouns that um, relate to Simon. So you see the second column in where it says number one nouns. Okay, you're gonna write as many nouns as you can think of that are affiliated or related to Simon. Okay, person, place, thing, or idea. Can you just write his name right there? Go ahead, write his name. Type it in there, first block. Nouns, under nouns. Okay, go ahead, figure out another word that's related to him. Only dealing with nouns. Becca, that looks delicious. I don't know what that is. Is that a burrito? Is that a cheese burrito? I don't know what. Also, now you're not gonna tell us what it is. You're just gonna like, just eat it in front of us. What is it? A crunch wrap. 
No, it's a chalupa. Oh, a chalupa. See, I knew it. I knew it. That's from Taco Bell. Somebody loves you. Oh, my gosh. And I think you had espresso or something. I don't know. I was like, what? Is it your birthday? They're like, it's my birthday every day. Kumu. Okay. Okay, we're in the nouns column. Let's go. Just jam out. Just go ahead and type in as many nouns as you can. If you're having a hard time, start another, click on another tab and type in thesaurus.com. Okay, and then maybe you can use the thesaurus to help you generate more nouns. Which is any kind noun. Related to Simon, because we're writing about Simon. Yeah, we're saying farewell to Simon. We want to yeah. honor him. So I to make sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, cannot be putting, you know, canoe. Yeah. <laughs> ocean. Okay, so like, where is his favorite place? Go ahead and write it down in the not the nouns column. Where does he like to go? Right. Nouns only in the nouns column. Anybody have nouns besides Simon? Maybe jungle and beastie. Oh, what? Um, well, fashion's at 250, but do you see, um, M, do you see what we're doing with this? Yeah. What, can, can you wait for like 10 minutes? Is that good? Okay, all right. So in the nouns column, any word that is a noun that relates to Simon, okay? So like, what is Simon, right? He is a boy, okay, boy, all right. <laughs> all right, boy, uh, what else? He, what is, what relates to him? He has this, oh gosh, island, okay, island. Jungle. If you could rename Simon, he is what? Is he a fortune teller? Maybe, right? If you could rename Simon, who is he? Is he um, a naturalist? Does he love nature? Okay. N naturalist is a noun, but... Um, adjectives are describers. So we'll move on to that in just a bit. Okay, now you, have, you should have at least like, oh my gosh, three nouns. Everybody have at least three nouns. Okay, good, because I gave you at least four, so I'm not sure, okay? So if you look, we're going to the column that says two verbs, actions, okay? Everybody see that? So now the noun has to be doing something, okay? So like, for example, if Simon is on that first row, I go over two columns and it's the verb. So what does Simon do? Simon what? Explores, right? Give, it, give him a verb, give him an action to do, okay? If the noun is jungle what would be the action right does the jungle embrace simon i would think so yeah does the jungle welcome simon yes right okay so you go in order so go ahead and link the verbs to the nouns right your nouns have to be doing something everybody good Okay, let me, let me just check to see if we're on the right track. Nella, what's your, what's one of your noun verb combinations? 
Mm. That's not a noun. <laughs> um, I don't really know. That's not a noun either. I don't know. Like, I have nouns, but I don't know, like... Okay, Simon. What does Simon do? Give me a verb. Huh? He helps. Okay, helps. Perfect. Okay. Simon helps. Okay. Somebody else. Um, Kekama. What do you have? What's your noun verb combination? Uh, he's a. That's a pronoun. He's a. Uh, he's a good uh, thinker. Brother. Okay, so noun thinker. Okay, thinker. Right. What's the verb then? Thinks. No, don't do that. So. Thinker, what does he do? Analyze. Analyze. Okay, thinker, analyze. That might not work out, but that's okay. We're just trying here. So, Emily, what do you have? Give me a noun verb combination that has not been mentioned yet. Simon's dying. Oh my gosh. Okay, maybe, maybe like, um, Okay, boys attacking, right? Let, what about Lord of the Flies? Put that into the nouns column, somebody. Everybody, put Lord of the Flies. What is, in relation to Simon, what's the verb? Okay, perfect. Lord of the Flies communicates. Make sense? Okay, so now we should have, I don't know, about five nouns and maybe five verbs, okay? So if you're looking at this, the roles become lines of poetry. So if you look, I'm gonna show you my screen so that you guys can um, see what I'm doing, okay? Because this is what you guys are going to be doing, but hopefully better, okay? So if you look, nouns, the silence, right? I found peace in, never mind, okay. So silence, peace, speaker, wanderer, naturalist, gatekeeper, truth seeker, right? Those are all nouns. Verbs, silence, sings. Peace, lives. Speaker, shares. Wanderer, exploring, but I think I need to put that back to explores, okay? Um, naturalist, connects, gatekeepers, Gatekeeper protects, truth seeker searches. Everybody see what I'm doing here? I'm matching up the noun with a corresponding verb. Okay, then step three, Emily, because you're leaving pretty soon. I wanna just walk you through this. Describe the noun, right? So I look, okay, well, what? how would I describe silence? Well, it's calm, right? Or empty, right? I can say calm or empty right? Empty, calm silence gently sings within us all. See that? Okay. Next, look, profound peace rarely lives among the living. This poem, because it's related to Simon, should kind of describe him and his being. Everybody good on that? I'm a little bit nervous. So what this is, is it's called a parts of speech poem. It, it helps people who um, are not really good at poetry, okay? But also it gives um, really creative people the room to say, okay, I have this now. So if you look down below, you're going to type the words like this and it becomes a poem. Do you see that? That's all I want you to do tonight is to try this top part out and then work on your poem. Just just type in whatever it comes out, okay? And then we're gonna play around with that tomorrow. That's all we're gonna do tomorrow to meet is to look at our poem. Okay, we good? One thing I wanna point out, okay, is this. You see how I have profound and peace, right? That's alliteration, right? So I want you to build in some alliteration. Not all though, because if not, it's gonna turn into a nursery rhyme and it's not gonna sound like a really cool poem. It's gonna be like, Dickery dickery dock. The mouse ran off the clock, right? I mean, it's just not really, um, I don't know, poetic. 
you're like, what? I like hickory dick. Okay, never mind. Okay, so if you look, eternal wanderer gracefully explores through the vines. Do you see? Do you hear how that describes what Simon does? Right? So I'm hoping that you guys can maybe play around with the words a little bit. Okay? So number three, adjectives. They, they describe or modify nouns. Adverbs is the fourth step. Okay, they're usually L-Y endings or they describe like rate or time, like never, rarely. Okay, everybody good on that. Now, the last part, you can have either a prepositional phrase or you can just add something else. I don't care what it is. But the prepositional phrase is like anywhere a rat can go. Do you guys remember this prepositional phrases? Up the tree, down the tree, in the tree, right? Anywhere a rat can go, that's what, um, that's what prepositional phrases are, right? It shows direction or location of something. Okay, we good? Okay, if you need more prepositions, go ahead right now, start another tab. Start another tab, I see your arm moving, yeah, or whatever to start another tab and write down and type in list of prepositions. Okay, and then that should help you with the fifth and final column. Once you're done with the chart, move the words down to the lines like that. Okay, create those lines, generate them just like that. Everybody good, everybody see what I did. Show me your 10 fingers. If you only have nine, that's okay. We just make sure that one is representing two fingers. 10 lines, people, 10, okay, all right. I think we're going to be done early, but I need you to work on this poem. Start reading as well. Tonight, if you have the time, I would do your membean so that tomorrow you can work on this poem and then read tomorrow. Okay. You have the breaking news assignment for chapters 10 and 11 as well. I can't wait to see what you guys do to dress up and which characters you're going to interview. Okay. I'll see you guys later. I think I need to. Somebody needs to, one group needs to stay later to do the freeze frame. Okay, so do that. And then I need to see, talk stars with Nella, right? Okay, all right, the rest of you guys, bye. Work on your poems. Okay. Now what is that, Becca? Becca, you know, I'm hungry and I'm watching you eat. I was like, oh. My freeze frame group. Who is in there? Oh. Okay, one, two. All of you guys are in the freeze frame. Wait, I didn't know we had this much people. I'm so confused. No, there's two groups, I think. No, it's two groups. It's two groups. Okay. What are the groups? We create. Can my group raise their hand? Oh, gosh. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Okay, wait, Nella, who's in that group? Oh, this is, wait. Oh my gosh. Wait, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, recreate. Okay, wait, so it's Nella. Nella, tell me who's in your group so I can just click away. Um, Nylicia, okay. Ahi, Maddie, and Kulukalani. Ah, Kulukalani and Maddie, and oh, there. Okay, and then the rest of you guys are in the, 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 okay, go. Holy smokers, that's French fries now. Becca, are those French fries? Becca is buffeting it out over there. Okay. All right, so how are you guys doing with the poems?
Okay. Are you done with your poem? Me? Yeah. What time is it? Oh, the class is going to end already. Okay, you guys can pack up. If you guys gotta meet tomorrow after, just tell them to meet after. What's wrong with this thing? I don't think it's supposed to be working like this. Yeah. Oh. What are what are the rose quartz for? Oh, okay. And what are and, um, incoming call from Manly Canoe? Incoming call from Manly Canoe. Oh. Bye, oh, guys. My cat. I did something to my computer, and I can't fix this. Isn't that horrible? <laughs> Hello. Hey, what's up? I'm good. Bye, you guys. Can you just prop the door open? Yes. No, we fell. Yeah. Oh, I thought I would make the first one. I am, but it's like um controlled by Lee San. Yeah, so I, yeah. So I'm waiting. So I had to wait for her. I really want to just like send the email because we're right. Well, we're gonna I'm I'm trying to get you guys paid to start planning. So we're gonna I set aside two weekends um to get work done oh oh my god wait wait wait